at the beginning of the week, I thought essentially what the impeachment case was, was the president soliciting foreign interference in a U.S. election. But then witnesses have come out. They're putting their professional reputation on the line to say what we saw inside Donald Trump's government wasn't right. It was a shadow diplomacy. Even though the administration is trying to stonewall, it's like trying to keep running water in your hands. There's no way that they can hold back the kind of information because so many people have seen it. You know, everybody was kind of anticipating what was going to happen in this Fiona Hill testimony. And we quickly learned that having been so freaked out by what he was witnessing on the part of Rudy Giuliani, Nick Mulvaney, and others, John Bolton went to the NSC's top lawyer and said, I want to get on the record here that there's an issue of concern. I think it was clear as day that the president had problems from within his own camp. You can criticize John Bolton for policy views, but John Bolton is not the kind of person who wants to see the Oval Office and the presidency used for the personal benefit of one individual. Right, and we have a pretty clear picture now that Rudy Giuliani was essentially running like a shadow foreign policy related to Ukraine. Just talk about the Rudy of it all. You know? <laughs> None of us knows at the end of the day whether Rudy Giuliani will be subjected to criminal process, but he is right in the hot molten core of the constitutional issue that's implicated by a president of the United States going to another country and saying, get involved in our election. So Mulvaney, Bolton, Pompeo, Barr, Giuliani. Do you anticipate in the next month that, that one of those people will become an antagonist to the president? I think there's some people who intend to have their political careers or their professional careers outlast Trump. Pompeo is one of them. He's looking at a Senate seat in Kansas. At what point does he decide that his political future is not best served by being linked to the president? People may think, look, I'm not going down for this guy. There isn't all the president's men kind of quality to the story that we didn't have a couple of weeks ago when this really began. There are other players. There are other witnesses. There are other targets of the investigation. So now against the backdrop of all of this, we have Syria. Here's political weakness and vulnerability that he just invited for no reason whatsoever that we can see. Like, how do you explain that? What's crazy to me about it was the letter from the White House that Trump sent to Erdogan. Um, dear Mr. President, this is from Trump to Erdogan. Let's work out a good deal. You don't want to be responsible for slaughtering thousands of people, and I don't want to be responsible for destroying the Turkish economy, and I will. Don't be a tough guy. Don't be a fool. I will call you later in your time as Chief of Staff to Leon Panetta. Whether you could ever imagine a letter remotely of this variety <laughs> going out on the director's letter. <laughs> I, I thought this was the onion. Right. Honestly, I thought this was a joke. It's sort of hard to explain what's going on in his mind. I think it's pretty easy to explain. I think Donald Trump is not good at being president. <laughs> I think a foreign leader totally plays him. At the end of the day, even if it's unconventional, even if it's sort of his style, it didn't work. It failed. It's bravado without any substance. He is either not mentally able to understand the consequences or willfully is blind to them. This is further evidence that the president is endangering national security.